Welcome to the School of Motion Graphics. My name is C.M. De La Vega, and we have a pretty awesome tutorial today because it will expand your knowledge on expressions. We'll be writing some code to pull off this audio-driven animation that was featured in the Grammys. A lot of you have been asking me to create a tutorial on how to do the light scribble effect, and that will be my next tutorial. I'm working with some friends of mine who are professional dancers to give you an amazing tutorial. So stay tuned, please be patient, and if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and let's get started. The first step is to import your audio file, and I'll be using this MP3 from epidemicsound.com, and you can see that the sample rate is set to 48 kilohertz. So let's just double check with our project settings to make sure that we have the same sample rate. To do that, let's go to File, Project Settings, let's go to Audio Settings, and in Sample Rate, we're matching, so we're OK. Hit OK, and let's click and drag to the composition icon to create a composition with the same duration of our audio file. Hit Control-K to open up the settings, and let's rename this to Box Animation. Let's make it 1920 by 1080. I'll make it 29.97 frames per second, but feel free to choose the best frame rate for your project. And for the start frame, let's make it one. Hit OK. Now here, if you're set to time code, let's switch it to frames. And to do that, hit Control, click, and you can switch it. You can see you can switch it back and forth. Select your audio layer, right click, go to Keyframe Assistant, convert audio to keyframes. And After Effects creates this null object called Audio Amplitude. Hit U on the keyboard to reveal all the keyframes. And you can see that After Effects created three set of keyframes, the left channel, the right channel, and the last one is called both channels, which is an average of the left and the right. Now the Audio Amplitude, basically what After Effects did is it generated a value or a number based on the amplitude of your audio track. Now the left and the right channel, we're not interested, so let's delete all the keyframes, click on the stopwatch, and we'll be using both channels to drive the animation of the height of our boxes. Now amigos, if you're new to the world of expressions in After Effects, I'll do my best to break it down step by step for you. And After Effects has several tools that will help us write these expressions. Now before we do anything, let me give you a quick demonstration. Let's go to the text tool and I like using the text tool for expressions because it displays the results of our expression. So for now, let's type in the letter A. And let me set this up for you. OK, I drill down to the source text. I'll click on the stopwatch to bring up the expression box. And this is the area where we can start writing our code. Now, these little tools, the expression, pick whip, and this little triangle, these are tools that After Effects provides to us to help us write code. And you can see these are different functions pre-built into After Effects. We'll be using these throughout the tutorial. OK, let's delete this line of code. And using the pick whip, let's click and drag all the way down to audio amplitude, go all the way down to slider, and let go. You can see that After Effects generated this line of code. So let's try to read it. It says, this comp which refers to box animation, layer audio amplitude, go down to the layer called audio amplitude, right here, go to effect, effect, both channels, right here, go to slider, slider, perfect. Let's just click outside, and if we move the cursor, you can see that it's outputting the value of our audio amplitude. Right now it's 20.26, 20.26. 42.57, and you just wrote your first line of code, amigos. Let's go, let me hide this for now. Let's deselect everything, edit, deselect all. Go to the rectangle tool and double click to create a shape layer. Let's drill down to the rectangle path. Let's unlink it and let's make the width 100 and let's make the height 500 pixels. Now, I'll click on the stopwatch for the size, and we'll write some code here. Now, this first number represents the width of our box in the X, and the second number is the height of our box in the Y. 
we'll be creating variables and variables is basically a container that holds a value. For example, this glass is a container that holds water. Let's create a variable called size X is equal to, now remember size X is the width, is equal to, and using the pick whip, let's click and drag to the first number. You can see that After Effects generated this line of code. Now to end our first line, we have to end it with a semicolon. So type in semicolon, we can go to the second line then type size Y, size Y is the second variable that we're creating. Remember, a variable is just a container that holds a value. Size Y is equal to, now, what we can do is using the pick whip, we can also reference this number, but instead, let's go down to audio amplitude, and let's go down to audio amplitude, let's go down to the slider. Remember, we need to add a semicolon at the end. And the last line of code that we need to give After Effects is, hey, After Effects, read the value of our variable for size x, which is the width, and read the value of our variable size y, which is the height. So to do that, put bracket size x comma size y. And just be careful because it's case sensitive. Once you create a variable, it's case sensitive. Okay, let's click outside and let's check it out. Okay, it's working. The only thing is that amplitude, our height is pretty small. It's only 23.7 pixels. But what we can do is we can multiply it. So times 10, for example. So right now it's 23.7. If we multiply it by 10, it'll be around 230. So you can see 236.5. And let's check it out. Okay, it's looking pretty good, but it's going pretty fast up and down. And what we want to do is slow it down or smooth it. So let's write another expression. Let's go down to audio amplitude. I'll click on the stopwatch and type in smooth parentheses 0.1 comma 5 parentheses. Let's click outside and let's check it out. looking a lot better. The smooth function accepts two values. The first one is the range of frames that you want to smooth out and that's in seconds and the second value is how many samples do you want to smooth. So if that doesn't make a lot of sense just type in smooth 0.1 comma 5 and that should work that should help out your audio. Okay let's go back. Now if we want to change the width, we can go ahead and change the width. We can type in 50 down here and we can change the multiplication factor, for example, to 15. And it'll work perfectly. The only thing is that it's time consuming because we have to drill down all the time down into here. So what we can do to make our life easier, let's add some expression control. So click on the shape layer, go to effect, expression control, go to slider control. Let's add another slider control. And the first one, let's call it box width. And the second one, let's call it mult for multiplication, mult factor. Perfect. So let's go to our box. And for the width, for the size X, let's delete this line of code. And remember, we were pointing to this first number. But instead of this number, let's go all the way to the slider for the box width. And put a semicolon. And for the multiplication factor, instead of 15, let's use the pick whip. Let's go back. Let's use the pick whip and go to the slider for the multiplication factor. Perfect. Now it disappears because we need to give it a value for the width. So give it a value of 100. And for the multiplication factor, for now, let's give it a value of 10. And let's play it back. Now, this is awesome because if we make a copy, control D, we can move it over and quickly we can make changes. Make another copy. And let's play it back. Now, this is looking pretty good, but we can take it a step further. We want each one going at, at a different rate. So one is going up, the other one is going down. So it's kind of oscillating among each different box. And 
we're going to write another expression. And before we do, let's go back to our text layer to give you another demo. And let's delete this line of code. And let's go to this triangle, the expression language menu, and click on it, go to global, go to time to frames. And let's just delete everything that's inside. And time to frames gives you the current frame that you're at. So right now we're at frame 1324. It's going to give us 1324. We go down to, we go all the way to 1977. It's going to give us 1977. Now we'll write a simple expression that will tell After Effects, hey After Effects, go to the audio amplitude, go 10 frames back and read the values 10 frames back or maybe five frames back. We'll be using this time to frames to help us do that. Now let's go back and let's create a variable, call it current frame equals time to frames. Same thing, remember, a variable is simply a container that holds a value. Now the cool thing is we can subtract, we can say minus 10. Right now we're at frame 1977. If we subtract 10 frames, it should give us 1967. Perfect. You can go all the way, let's say go to 100. If we go to 100, 100 minus 10 is 90. Now, let me drill down to audio amplitude. Let's take it one step further using the pick whip. Let's go to audio amplitude slider. And we'll be typing in dot key. And key accepts a number, and that's a frame number. So we can put for now, for example, frame 100 dot value semicolon. And what that will do is it'll return the value at a specific frame. So right now we're saying we're hard coding frame 100. So if we let go, it's going to give us 10.736, which rounds up to 10.74, which is this number. So now instead of hard coding a number, instead of 100, we can put our variable called current frame. So we'll type in current frame and let's see what happens. It changes to 8.6. So at frame 90, the amplitude should be 8.62 once we round up. So let's go to frame 90. We can see right here, it's 8.62. So let's use these two line of codes, copy it, control C, and we can delete this text for now. Let's go to our shape layer, let's drill down. And let's go to the beginning, let's paste it in. And this line, let's cut it. And this line will be the line that we'll use for our height. Perfect. Now let's check it out. Perfect. So you can see that it's oscillating, it's going at different rate. Perfect. Now let's add another expression control for the difference. So instead of hard coding 10 frames back, instead of telling After Effects always go 10 frames back, we can change that number whenever we want. So let's go back to the shape layer. Let's add another slider control and let's rename it to frame diff for frame difference. And instead of minus 10, using the pick whip, let's go to the slider for frame diff. And in here, we can put five for now. Perfect. Now there's one last bit of code that we need to add. What happens if we're at frame one and we subtract five? We have a frame difference of five. So one minus five is negative four. We're telling After Effects, read the value at negative four. Well, there is no value negative for it. There's only values from frame one all the way down to the end of our audio. So it's going to give us an error. Now, if we go to the beginning, let me show you. We go to the beginning, you can see that there's an error. Let's type in some code that will prevent this error. So type in try, put this bracket, try to execute this line of code and catch any errors. So type in catch parentheses ERR1. And if you catch any error, then let's copy this code, control C, and let's paste it. So try to execute this line. If there's an error, then the size Y will be, instead of the current frame, we'll make it one. We'll hard code one. So if there's an error, if we're in the negative, it's always going to output the value at frame one until we get out of the negative.
pretty easy and let's check it out perfect and you can make copies control D you can make a copy we can change pretty easy the width the multiplication factor the difference and go ahead make copies of this change the values of the box width, the multiplication factor and the frame difference and what you should do is create something very similar to this by just adjusting all these parameters that we created the sliders that we created once you have this let's move on to the next step let's go to the composition icon create a composition and let's call it BG 1920 by 1080 make it the same frame rate that you chose at the beginning and just make sure you have the same duration of your audio hit OK create another comp and let's call this Grammy FX and let's go to our BG and let's create a new solid let's give it a gradient let's change this color to dark blue blue let's sample this one let's make this lighter Let's sample it and let's just bring these points. Perfect. And bring in a cutout of an image. I'm going to skip this step for you. I'm hoping that you know how to cut it out. I'll be making a tutorial on how to cut out using Photoshop in the near future. But for now, I'm hoping most of you amigos know how to cut out. So bring in your cutout and go to the Grammy effect and bring in the bars bring in your background and we'll be using the track mat now if you don't see the track mat right click go to columns and make sure that you have modes checked on so you see it's off go to modes and go to BG and switch it to alpha mat bars and create another solid and we can make it white or a little bit off white Let's bring it to the bottom. There you go. Now what we can do is we can go back to our BG, go to the cutout, copy it, control C, go back to the Grammy effect and paste it. And hopefully it'll paste it right in the same spot. And what we can do is using the pen tool, let's just cut out. For example, maybe you want the head to stick out. Just use the pen tool and just cut it out. I'm going to do this pretty fast, but take your time. And let's check it out. That is it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. You learned something new. Now, if you want to get started in the field of motion graphics and make some money doing freelance, definitely check out the book that I wrote. It's available on Amazon. And I put a link to the book in the description below. And always remember that life is truly a gift, so make it count.